away the new Scoopy gang. That's Reyna. That's Sam. That's Maud. I'm going to talk about those new starter Pokemon. Yay! And I'm talking about the early reviews of X-Men Apocalypse. But I'm going to kick it all off with some movie news. Civil War. Oh, I'm so sorry. Now, Civil War opened on the weekend and... Some of you saw it, didn't you? Some of you maybe saw it twice. So how much did it make domestically in its opening weekend? Well, $181.79 million. That is the third highest for a Marvel movie and the fifth highest grossing opening weekend ever. Check out this handy little guide thanks to Marvel, Disney and the peeps over at Forbes who've put together the top 10 highest domestic opening weekend earnings from Marvel along with their Rotten Tomato scores. Ouch, X-Men Last Stand. Now, next in movies, word has it that we'll be seeing an Assassin's Creed trailer tomorrow. So let's catch you up on what we already know about this video game adaptation, including new stills from set before the trailer drops. Like the story arc of the game, Michael Fassboner will be playing the modern day version of a character. In this instance, it's Callum Lynch, who you see here, whose genetic memories of his ancestor, a 15th century Spanish assassin named Aguilar, pictured perching here, are tapped into by the Animus at Abstergo Industries. Are you following along? They do this so that they can take on the organization known as the Templars. There he is, fighting them there. Oh, that looks interesting. Both of these characters are completely new, not in any previous games that you've seen already. And that's not the only thing that they're changing up. According to Michael Airbender, they're just using the game as a guide and are set on turning it into a cinematic experience. He's confessed that everyone working on the movie is treating the game with a healthy dose of respect and disrespect. Oh, fast breather, you do not tell gamers that you are disrespecting them. And that they're not trying to directly replicate the game, but instead of focusing on thematic elements. Nothing says cinema like thematic elements. The trailer is out tomorrow, so hopefully we'll be able to get more of a vibe than just these pictures that we've seen. Fingers crossed, it's cool. The movie is out December 21. Hey, Sam. <laughs> Remember that joke when you pushed me over? I had a pencil in my pocket. And we're gonna power through this one. Keeping on with movie news, Wolverine 3 has officially moved into production. Here's what we know. The film will be rated R, so extra bloody violence. The story will be taking place in the future, and there will be some sort of Western tone. A Western feel for a superhero film? Color me intrigued. Patrick Stewart is signed on, and Hugh Jackman explained that the film will explore the father-son relationship between Wolverine and Professor X. Yes, please. Stephen Merchant and Richard E. Grant have also signed on for unknown roles, but I don't care because I love both of them. Uh, Whovians, Richard E. Grant was in Doctor Who. Wink. This is expected out in 2017, and we can safely assume that it is an old man Logan-esque story. It doesn't matter what you angry nerds say about how the story doesn't work if they don't have access to the larger Marvel universe, the studio is still gonna make it work somehow. Will it be just as fun as the comic? Probably, probably not. The word of the day is optimism, kids. Speaking of optimism, try to hold on to it as we dive into the early reviews of X-Men Apocalypse. The reviews are at best, described as mixed. That's the optimist way of looking at things. Currently on Rotten Tomatoes, Apocalypse is sitting at a steady 47% from most critics, while top critics gave it a 22%, which is now below Batman v Superman by a few marks. What the hell happened, X-Men? Stay optimistic. Let's look at a few reviews. IGN gave it a 7.0, which is good, with a few complaints. Yay! USA Today stated the latest in the X-Men movie franchise is X-Men. <laughs> Clever but hurtful. Possibly my favorite review, although negative, comes from the Chicago Tribune's Michael Phillips, who stated, I've seen worse this year and better. Kind of a middle ground. Should we be taking these reviews to heart? No, you should go watch the movies and form your own opinions. However, as a fanboy, especially for Days of Future Past and First Class, it's a little disheartening. My little heart is breaking. What's the goal of the day? Staying optimistic. Now, I want to hear from you guys. What are your take on reviews? Do you listen to them or do you avoid them like a plague? Haha, <laughs> tricked you, you already listened to one. Let me know down below. Raina, get your ass over. Oh man, she's taking her time. Where you going? And we're going, and we're going. Did it. Hey, remember last week when we announced that there will be an announcement about Pokemon this week, so stay tuned? Well, I'm a sad little fanboy, so I faithfully waited, and look what we got. A new Pokemon trailer for Sun and Moon. <laughs> Not everybody is nearly as excited as me. We now know this generation will take place in the tropical Alola region. I love that! I've always wanted something tropical and it reminds me of Tortimer Island from Animal Crossing. And they have a volcano! What could that mean? It could be nothing. Now let's talk about the starters. This time, we get to choose between Rowlet, Litten, and Poplio. I was really unimpressed at first, but by the 18th time I watched the trailer, they all started to grow on me. Except for the clown seal. That's like two things I really hate conjoined as one. Rowlet is a grass flying type, which is pretty crazy because Bulbasaur is the only other starter Pokemon that hasn't evolved yet that 
has a subtype. And when Rowlet's wings are out, he's pretty cute. And then we have Litten. There are gonna be lots of memes, aren't there? Well, at least it's a kitty, a fire kitty. And I really like that he looks like he has an attitude problem. Okay, I'm into it. Wait, there's more. We also got to see both the legendaries for sun and moon. Meet Lionio. I made that up, but he's a giant sun lion. And there's Bat Moon. I made that one up too. Pokemon should hire me. Pokemon Sun and Moon will be available November 18th of this year. It's all happening so fast, but Nintendo is still going to gear all of E3 to Zelda. I can't get over how strange that is. What are your thoughts on Sun and Moon starter Pokemon? I was a bit harsh on Twitter this morning, but I'm warming up to them now. Let me know how you feel below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Check out SourceFed Nerd's Facebook page, and we'll see you again tomorrow. Bye, bye, bye. The Call of Duty Infinite Warfare trailer is now the number eight disliked YouTube video of all freaking time. This makes it the number one, as in the most disliked YouTube trailer of all time in space.